All right, the bracket is here. Oregon is a part of it. I'm stoked about it, and I love the draw that Oregon got here. So the Ducks are an 11 seed, which is about what you'd expect. Last time Oregon did this with Peyton Pritchard and Kenny Wooten and company, they were a 12 seed, of course, made a run to the Sweet 16, lost to the eventual national champion in Virginia. But Oregon is one seed better this year at an 11. Their first round game is against South Carolina out of the SEC, a solid team. And just reading the ESPN snippet, which... <laughs> Why don't we come back to that in a moment? About South Carolina could be a good matchup for the Ducks because the word on South Carolina is, well, they're a good team, they're good defensive, but their offense can be inefficient. If you play a defensively minded team, that's going to be a challenge for them. Well, Oregon has won four straight games. How? They've held every one of those opponents to under 70 points. And Dana Altman teams, when they play at their best, this is what it looks like. They're not hitting a billion threes, and Oregon didn't make a single three-pointer in the second half in the Pac-12 championship game against Colorado and still won the game by seven points. So the Ducks' identity has always been defense. I think they've really found their groove. I think Shellstad has improved. Dante is just so impactful at that end of the floor. It is, it is, it is fantastically great. K.J. Evans, the true freshman, is a phenomenal defender. He can block shots, great length, athleticism. I, I mean, he's fantastic. Jermaine Kuznar dials into the defensive end. They've got players at that end of the floor. So can Oregon beat South Carolina? Yes. Can they lose to South Carolina? Also, yes. It's March and everybody is just, feels like there's just such a massive reset when you get to March and that's fantastic, right? Not, a, not in a complete and total reset, but I definitely, definitely think Oregon can make a run here. Am I confident they will? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There, there could be an emotional letdown component to making this run, winning the Pac-12 tournament, Kuznard and Dante getting their chance to play in the big dance and then going to play a good South Carolina team and having to go all the way to Pittsburgh to do it. But here's what I love about this setup for Oregon. If they are going to do not the unthinkable, but perhaps the improbable, and make some deep run all the way to, you know, the Elite Eight, Final Four, wherever. The top seeds in their in their region, which is the Midwest, are Purdue, Tennessee, Creighton, who's very good, Kansas, and Gonzaga's the five. Okay, first of all, Gonzaga is the five. Doesn't scare me in the slightest. They're not a very good team. Secondly, Kansas is terrifying if they're healthy. They are the scariest four seed in this entire tournament if they are healthy. But Kevin McCuller Jr. and Hunter Dickinson have both been banged up. I am not currently aware of their status. We might not know until it gets close to tournament time. And if one of those guys gets banged up, that team, of course, is significantly less intimidating. But if they're both there and healthy, I might be picking Kansas to get out of this region because they're very good. Purdue is a one seed again. Congratulations. They're kings of the regular season. They have made one good run through the NCAA tournament to, I believe, the Elite Eight in my lifetime when they had Carson Edwards all those years ago and played that crazy game against Virginia in which they should have won, but they you know, had Diakite, the, uh, the tall guy with the blonde hair, and he had the push shot to send the game to overtime, and Brian Anderson was on the call, and he said for the win, but it was actually for the tie, went to overtime, Virginia won, and then Virginia won the national championship. So Purdue... Last year, lost to Farley Dickinson as a 16 seed. Now, the flip side of what I just said about the Boilermakers also brings Virginia to mind. Because Purdue, if they're going, or sorry, Virginia lost to a 16 seed. They were the first one to do it. Purdue was the second. And then the next year after losing to a 16, Virginia won the national championship. Maybe Purdue has a turnaround like that. I don't suspect they'll lose in the first round again. But... Purdue has not had a great history in the NCAA tournament. Tennessee is a two seed who Oregon would meet in the Sweet 16 if they were to win their first two games, which is not going to be easy. Tennessee has also had their shortcomings in March Madness. Rick Barnes has been there for a long time. Good coach. Won a lot of games. Has not been beyond the Sweet 16 in over a decade. It has been a rough go of it for the Volunteers. Now, Creighton as the three seed scares me. Elite Eight team last year. I think McDermott's a fantastic coach. 
I really hope Oregon wins for many reasons, not the least of which is Dana Altman against Creighton. It'd just be kind of fun. It, it, it would just be kind of fun. Now, the last two times Oregon had to win the tournament to make the NCAA tournament, and they did so, they went all the way to the Sweet 16. 2013-14, and what is it, four years ago now, in the 2018-19 season. So it has been done before where Oregon wins a couple of games. And I think the South Carolina draw is solid. 11-6 matchups. The 11-6 games are not all going to go one way. The numbers bear this out. The seeding matchup, the last time the number six seeds won all four meetings in a single tournament was 2004. So between Oregon, New Mexico, North Carolina State, and Duquesne, at least one of those teams is winning. Just statistically speaking. So I think it is a good draw for Oregon because the teams at the top, again, I am not expecting a magical run, but the possibility is absolutely there. UCLA was a first four team in the first year that the tournament came back after it was canceled because of COVID. They were a first four team. They were an 11 seed. They went to the final four. They lost to Gonzaga at the buzzer. Jalen Suggs hit that crazy running bank shot from just inside a half court. Okay. Bonkers. Bonkers. But what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is the range of outcomes is so vast. Because I think a lot of people would want to know. And as I record this show, I haven't looked at all your guys' comments and everything on the YouTube reaction show that, that, that I did from the Pac-12 Tournament Championship win. But the range of outcomes here, I don't think could be greater for Dana Altman and company. If you told me they make it to the Elite Eight or even the Final Four and have some magical run where they catch fire, think Oregon State a couple of years ago came in as a 12 seed, had to win the Pac-12 tournament. They weren't even a bubble team. They went to the Elite Eight. This sort of stuff can absolutely happen. You know what else can happen? Oregon could have two of 17 from beyond the arc catch up to them. South Carolina hits a couple more, and the Gamecocks find a way to win, and Oregon is done in the first round. And look, would that be disappointing? At some level, yeah. At, at some level, yes, it would be. Because as I said, this is a very gettable region. I think you've got the weakest of the four number one seeds because I think Houston, UConn, and North Carolina are awesome, and Purdue, I, I, I just cannot trust them. I cannot trust them in the NCAA tournament. And so... That is absolutely a break. Tennessee, as I said, hasn't had the most success. Good team. Dalton Connect out of the Big Sky, a conference I used to cover with, with, with Southern Utah. Great. I call his games once upon a time. Guy is a heck of a basketball player. Could be the player of the year in college basketball. Not denying that. But this is March. And I won't be surprised if Oregon loses their first game. I'll dive more into this matchup as the week goes along, but I wanted to give kind of a big picture, you know, examination of all this. And if you have any questions about the game or anything of the sort, by all means, let me know. Love me some hoops content. And I love that Oregon's in March Madness. This is the first time. This is the first time since I've hosted this show that Oregon's made the tournament. And as you can tell, I'm pretty fired up. <laughs> I'm pretty fired up and stoked about it because Oregon could make a run to the final four. They could also lose their first game. I think the season has already been a success. Of course, I'm saying that on Sunday night recording the show. By the time Thursday rolls around, I will be disappointed with anything less than a Sweet 16 appearance. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get there, as we all will. But love the draw for the Ducks, and they just got to show up and go win the game. Jermaine Kuznard gets to go against his old school, and he and Dante came back for this moment, and let's hope they're ready for it. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Ducks.